Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. Glory to God. First Chronicles 14, and I read verses 8 to 17. And then I read Micah chapter 2 and then verse 13. Now when the Philistines add, they hear. You see, there are people who will hear your good news this month. And when they had, what is it that they had? That David had been anointed king over all Israel. And all the Philistines went up to search for David. That's why they tell you that new levels, new battles. The moment he became king, he became their enemy. The Bible says, and David had it and went out against them. Then the Philistines went out and made a raid on the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? The Lord said to him, Go up, for I will deliver them into your hand. So they went up to a place called Baal Perazim. And David defeated them there. Then David said, God has broken through my enemies by my hand like a breakthrough of water. Therefore they called the name of that place Baal Perazim. And when they left their gods there, David gave a commandment. You see, they came with their gods. <laughs> the Bible says they left them there and David commanded they were born with fire. Verse 13 says, Then the Philistines once again made a raid on the valley. Therefore David inquired again of God and said to him, You shall not go up after them. Circle around them. The last time he said he should go. This time he says, Circle around them and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. And it shall be, when you hear a sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall go out for battle. For God has gone out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. Note that word. He has gone what? Before them. So David did as God commanded him. And they drove back the army of the Philistines from Gibeon as far as Geza. Then the fame of David went out into all lands. And the Lord brought the fear of him upon all nations. Go to Micah chapter 2. Micah. Do you know Micah is in scriptures? Is it Mika? Micah? Which one? Okay. Glory to God. Do you know he's in the Bible? Somebody's looking and say, ah, where is that one again? Thank God that you are using apps. If it was the days of Bible, people turn it and be looking for it. They will just be looking. They won't find it. But now you just press it and it comes out. Glory to God. Then verse 13 says, Micah chapter 2 verse 13. Listen to this. The one who breaks open. Don't forget that he had broken open. Before David went out. Now the Bible says, then the one who breaks open will come up before them. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out by it. Their king will pass before them with the Lord at their head. The King James says, um, the breaker will go before them. The breaker is God. Today I want to speak for a few minutes on breaking barriers. If you have come to this service with any kind of barriers... I want you to look at it emotionally. <laughs> Close your eyes. Just look at it. As God said to David, to, to, the, to, to the Israelites, the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. It might be lack. It might be stagnation. It might be pain. It might be disappointment. Look at it. Look at it. This is a prophetic service. Look at it. And I want you to declare, I see you no more. Say that, say that as God's word. Oh, confession means to say God's word after him. I see you no more. The breaker has gone ahead. I see you no more. Father, thank you because the entrance of a word will give light even today. I've come as your servant to give your word in due time to your people. Father, when you found us out, you've discovered this is the word we need for the now. And you've sent your word, Lord. As I publish your word, let your people receive your word. Even with simplicity, with power, and with grace. I declare that they walk in the fullness of your word. And your work change and transform their life. Thank you because after now, oh God, there shall be supernatural turn around. Make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Can I have a believing amen? amen. You can have your seat in God's presence. Now, I'm speaking to you on breaking barriers. This scripture verse that we read, 
Now, let me start by saying that when you see people going from place to place, especially believers, saints, they go from place to place, from churches to churches. In fact, they go from convention to convention, and they go from Holy Ghost meetings to Holy Ghost meetings. They are not looking for God. They are actually looking for answers. Can I say that to you again? They are looking for answers. They are not looking for God. Because God is not lost. God is everywhere. But they are looking for answers. A Yoruba adage says, when you see an old man running, if he's not chasing something, something is chasing it. So when you see adults who should know better, go from churches to churches, from prophet to prophet, uh, and from apostles to apostles, uh, they are not seeking for something more than breakthrough. In fact, that is the theme of many conferences. Breakthrough. Have you, have you seen that before? Breakthrough conference, breakthrough summit, breakthrough convention. The idea is that there is a barrier and men want to break through. Scripture says, and I love the fact that Scripture says that the one who breaks ahead of us, his name is God. So there is no obstacle that should be in the line of the believer's move if the believer has God moving in front of him. It is that revelation that you must have that will transform your life. That I am not alone, but God goes ahead of me. Now understand that God does not go ahead of every one of us at all times and in all seasons, except we are in line with his will. And that talks about alignment. Without divine alignment, God does not go in front of you. Many people are on journeys that God is not on that journey with them. So the question to ask is that, is my stagnation because of disobedience? If you are on a journey and God is not on that journey with you, the breaker will not go ahead of you. So it is the assurance of God being in a relationship. It is the assurance of God being in a business, of God being in a ministry, of God being in a life that guarantees that it goes ahead of you. Somebody understand that? Therefore, if I am not moving in line with God's will, then I will find the stagnation, obstructions, and obstacles. That, by the way, defines what barriers are. I'm talking about breaking barriers. So let me give you definitions of barriers. Barriers are obstacles, obstructions, and anything. They are obstacles, they are obstructions, and anything that is stopping us from two things. Obstacles, obstructions, and anything that is stopping us from two things. Number one, assessing the promises of God. Anything that stops you from assessing the promises of God, that's an obstacle. That's a barrier. That's number one. And then number two, anything that stops you from living your life to the fullest. I mean, when I started out, I said that by the age of 35, I should have two kids and I should be married. That is what I command and I believe is living my life to the fullness. Therefore, anything that is not stopping, that is now stopping me from living my life to the fullness, that's a barrier. Anything that you think upon as you lie on bed, even after you have taken yourself out at night and you had a good night, you know? people have good nights in Lagos and they, are, they didn't sin, right? Take yourself out, took suya, right? And then took a drink and then had friends with, with them girls or have a good time with them boys. And then you, 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 you drove home or you took a ride home and then you got home. It's time for a good night sleep. But some things came to your mind. And because those things came to your mind, the, the, the happiness you bought just lost its value. Because you remembered that certain things are not working. Those are barriers. They are obstructions that is stopping you from living your life to the fullness. Listen to this. For Israel, Jericho and Jordan were an obstruction. God has said, I'll take you to the promised land. But before the promised land, this Jericho wall must fall. If it does not fall, there's no assessing. Jordan must be crossed. If the Lord does not part Jordan, there is no assessing of the promise. Is somebody listening to me? Now, Boaz was a good man, successful by all standard, but he wasn't going to have an inheritance. That means after he died, nobody was going to inherit it without marriage. So a lack of marriage was a barrier. He was rich. He was successful. He didn't have to believe God to marry Ruth. <laughs> No financial, not believing for financial miracles. It was well to do. But there was that barrier. You remember Hannah? Hannah had a loving husband. But a loving husband will not do with barrenness in the house. 
Do you have aunties and sisters who are waiting for the fruit of the womb? There is a pain. They might be driving the best cars, but when they go home and they remember that the house is empty, there's something. Sometimes they seek it and they start crying. You can't explain that, but they want that. That's exactly what Ruth wanted. And he went to Shiloh, the presence of the Lord. Because that was a barrier. For her living the fullness of her life. For some people, it is an underemployed job, underpaid job. You are working, but you know you deserve better than that. You know, you know that if it is according to your skill set, according to your knowledge, experience, and exposure, you should get better pay. But here you are, stuck like a nail driven to a tree. Stuck. Obstacles, therefore, by nature can be physical. They can be spiritual. They can be emotional. They can be mental. They can be educational. As our faces differ, no matter how the manicure, the pedicure, <laughs> they smell good. You know, when you have people in church, church people are so awesome. Everybody has a problem in church. Have you not discovered? Everybody looks so good. Glory to God. Smile well. Appropriately comb their hair. Glory to God. The human hair, bone straight. Everything is set. Church people don't have issues. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Where you look at the outside, but on the inside, there is a fire raging. There are barriers. As our faces differ, our issues also differ. It seems that the devil has placed many lives under certain boundaries and limitations. It's like a ceiling. You might look at your family and discover there seems to be like a ceiling. Oh, we prosper, but we never eat that mark. We never get wealthy. We can't say we are poor. <laughs> Everybody's your average. Glory to God. That's a slim it. You can see it. You can sense it. It's there. But the Bible says in Micah chapter 2 verse 13, that there's someone called the breaker. God's plan is to prosper us. God's plan is to ensure that all things work together for our good. Third John chapter 2, the Bible says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospers. Say unto the righteous, he shall be well with him. God's idea is that though your beginning was small, your latter end should, should greatly increase. You should not look at yesterday as yesterday was better. Every part of the righteous should be like a shining light. 4.18 in the book of Proverbs shines more and more unto the perfect day. Listen to this. There are many things that stand as obstacles in the life of believers. Number one is the man or the being, sorry, the being called the devil. To assume that there is no devil is to live in a life, is to live a life of ignorance. The devil is at work in the heart, is active and is present. That's news. The devil is at work in the earth and it's alive, is active and is powerful. Like I've always said to people who are close to me. That the devil will be a bad devil if he does not have two things. If the devil cannot give money, he will be a bad devil. If the devil cannot give power, he will be a bad devil. Because he can't recruit people. What the devil recruits with is power, is money, and then number three, faith. The scripture called him your adversary, the devil. He's the one, to, to call somebody an adversary means somebody who confronts. He's the one who confronts. Is the one who wants your life to go contrary and against God's plan for your life. And every other thing that also serves as a barrier can be said to emanate from him. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. The Bible says, peace on the earth. Because the accuser of the brethren has been taken away. But for now, he is not taken away. The accuser is still there. He is the adversary. To cause somebody an adversary is uh, for somebody to be going against you. Going against your forward movement. That is the principal work of the devil. Turn 10, 10, John. Jesus said, I, he said the devil, the, the thief. He said the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You see, if you look at those three things, you will see the accuser of the brethren there. He steals to steal your joy. He wants to kill. 
He want to destroy your career. He want to destroy your ministry. See the problem when you see pastors say, pastors are sleeping with girls. They don't understand the problem is that that guy wants to destroy their ministry. He wants to destroy you. That's his work. There are mistakes you make in your life. You think that mistake is just that mistake? No. The end goal is that the devil wants to destroy you. Little, little error. It does not matter. The devil is a strategist. He doesn't mind waiting. A little here, a little there. He knows that it will take you out of alignment. I preached it before. When a car is out of alignment, when you drive that car, the car, a car is supposed to go this way. If the alignment is right, it goes straight. But when a car is out of alignment and for you to miss direction, all you need to do is to just go just five degrees outside of where you are supposed to be. So he just takes the car this way. He's not taking it this way. He only just takes it small this way. Now, that is your goal. If he takes it this way, the farther you go this way, the farther away from God's purpose you move. So that the devil does not need you to do 100% stun. All he needs is a little deviation to destroy your destiny. A little kissing. A little hugging. A little walk with the bang guys. A little thinking in your heart that is God really good. That thought can set you on a course to destruction with your relationship with God. The devil. Second barrier are the systems of this world. Systems of this world. Let me say this to you. The systems of this world are not under the lordship of the Christ. The systems of this world are under the lordship of the devil. The Bible call him in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and then verse 11, the God of this age. No, less than have an advantage of us and ignorance of his devices. That's what he says in 2 11. But the Bible also calls the devil the God of this age. Listen to this. This age you are in, the political system, the financial system is controlled by devils. Therefore, that they sack you or certain things are not working is not the thing to cry for. Your home is not really here. Your home is in the heaven. But will you prosper here? Yes. If you follow God, you will prosper. If you follow the principles of God, you will prosper. Therefore, Bible says, they that compare themselves by themselves, they are not wise. There are the things the world people do. You see, the devil lets some people have their way because he knows that they are needed. If you try it, he will destroy you. Am I speaking to somebody? Number three, causes. Causes are what released into our lives that limits the proper flourishing and the blessings of our lives. Oh, somebody said, I don't believe in causes. The Bible says a cause without cause will not alight. <laughs> it means that a cause with a cause will do what? It will alight. In fact, it will sit there. It is a cause without cause that will not alight. But a cause with causes, <laughs> uh, the reason for it will alight. Listen to this. There are people that their parents have caused. There are legitimate, spiritual legitimate causes in family lines. I don't want to say some things in Lagos, but I will say them. I know a family that the grandfather, the grandfather, the grandfather in Yoruba land, so don't look at us like Yoruba people, because when I say it, you will remember that they do it in your village too, because this is Africa. And they say they call it Africa. It's the, it's the place of black people. <laughs> and this man in those days wanted not to die and one of the things they do is that they take children from the womb and then they do some mischiefs and they take the person hits it to elongate life they call it in Yoruba and for some of you who don't understand those things right so now listen to this story this particular grandfather had a lady who was a servant girl. She was pregnant. And they took the baby. She meant she delivered. They took the baby and cut the baby's head. And the girl said, 
if there is a God in the heavens, no woman in this lineage will have a baby without suffering. Do you think that is a cause without cause? Is a real cause. A real one. There are levels to these things. Because there is a blood that backs that up. Now, as a believer that you become born again, that does not mean that cause is not active because you are there. What you need to learn is how to ensure that that cause does not alight in your own life because now you are a new creature. But automatically, it will want to activate itself. Now, let me tell you what a cause is because people don't know what causes are. To cause a fish is to take the fish out of water. Do you know that when you take a fish out of water, does it die? Ah, no, not immediately, sir. Depending on the species, sir, it can, it can live for two hours. In fact, if it's a catfish, you will see the struggle. They will live, but the struggle shows you that that is not his environment. You will see the cause active. That's why some people are struggling. To cause a man is to stop him from prospering. I'll give you a scriptural example. Genesis 49, verses 3 to 4. There was a man by the name of Reuben. Reuben slept with his father's wife. No, not his mother. And not the wife. Do you understand? That is, um, you know, in the lineage of Jacob, in Jacob's house, there were a lot of women, four wives. Two were original wives, Leah and Rachel. And then there were wives that were maids given out. Now you take this one. You take this one. I'm not giving back to children. Take this one. He slept with one of them. The father said nothing in scriptures. Are you listening to me? Said nothing. The day he was going to die, he was praying for them. He said, come, let me tell you what will happen afterwards. You children of Jacob. He said, Reuben, you are my firstborn. Unstable as waters, you shall not prosper. History, history told us that the lineage of Reuben was one of the biggest clan in Israel. But they began to reduce. You know why? Instability. Do you know that when there was rebellion against Moses, and they said, are you the only one God spoke to? That the grand opened himself and took them in. You, have you read that story before? And took thousands of them. Do you know that it was the lineage of Moses? It was the lineage of Reuben. Unstable as water, they will not prosper. He took Moses to stand and say, let Reuben live and not die. A man had to stand up hundred of years after to stop the curse from going on. If you don't stop it, it will come to your life. Can I say it? The way they say it in the word, they play. If you, are, if you don't stop it, it will ally. But the gist is that if you are a believer, you have the power, the authority to do that. But I'm telling you what barriers are. Can I continue, please? Number four, what are char character failures? Now, understand that many believers are being taken advantage of by the devil. You see the way they spend money. Mismanagement. Let me say this to you. When somebody is operating under a curse, <laughs> that's what causes character failure. When you hear a family that their women don't stay in their husband's house, have you seen people like that before? No, it's not hard. Have you seen? It is not, because people think we just say super story. I, families, they don't. Let me say this to you. What you will find out there is that all the women, sometimes some of them talk a lot. They will just be talking. Since they did not ask them, they will be talking. No, no, no. It is that talk that the husband will be angry with. The men they marry because of the cost my now start drinking. So for the cost to become operative, the cost first of all have to affect your life and affect your decisions. Causes affect the decisions and the character of men. That is what causes are. If they cause somebody that they, they don't, you know, in the family, this family, they don't really have financial wealth. They don't build wealth. You know what they do? You know what you will, you just cover that some of them would just like drinking. I went to Blanco the other day. 
I saw an NS, NSCSOP. One bottle. I looked at it. You know, I won't buy. I looked at it. 75K. Glory be to God. Somebody any 500K. We buy four NNC. That's the cost activated. But you look at him and say, this guy is just enjoying his life. Glory to God. But that is what is going on. The cause is activated. So that we see when you look at the devil, if you don't understand spiritual warfare, you will think that he will, he will bring with arms and be knocking you down. No. You'll be living your life. But you will not know that those decisions are not by you. Some people are making them for you. Your generation have made those decisions for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some people like girls. How can you be any 150,000 and you have four girlfriends in Lagos? That's a cause. That's a cause. You, can, you can't, you can't. How will you have money? You can't survive. Everything will be fake life. But you see, the good thing about the fake life is that after the fake is gone, your pockets cannot. You see, you don't, you don't do fake accounts. You, you see the accounts there. Looking at you. Do you get what I'm trying to say? When the people like it is cause poverty, sickness. Somebody will be very rich and then you just see a mysterious sickness upon them. They carry them to everywhere. Nothing seems to work. Doctors will even tell you, I don't know what is wrong. I remember when they looked at me and told me that let's go and check your heart. And then I came with the result of the heart. He said, your heart seems fine. Your dad does he have any heart problem? We don't have heart problem. He looked at me and said, I can't understand this, but this is what you are going through. But you are too young to even have this. When they start telling you things like that, brother, sister, take drugs, but face God. Because your solution is not medically. You see, doctors get to their wit end, but there is no, it's not possible for any doctor to look at you and say your problem is spiritual. They won't tell you that. They won't. A doctor is looking at you. They won't tell you that. The, 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 the first thing they can tell you is that, the best they can tell you is that, I don't understand this. When you start hearing, I don't understand this. Just understand it yourself. Oh God, Yoruba will say, Tesele, boy. You, you say, just start praying. Face God. These are truth, truth. Another thing, number five, actions and inactions. Failure to obey scriptural standards. Failure to honor authority. Failure to do what God has said. That is what causes barriers in life of people. Failure to just follow a simple instruction. Failure to follow what God has said. Saul, go to this land, destroy them. He said, no, I want to keep some for you to sacrifice to you. Samuel said, obedience is better. That sacrifice. Just obey God. Obey God. I told you when we say the, the breaker will go ahead of you, it means that it will go in the line he expects you to walk in. The breaker will not go ahead of you when you are walking contrary to what God wants you to walk in. Please, when you are coming to church next Sunday, dress well for the occasion, please. I, I like the code. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, so glory to God. In the verse of scripture we read, which is our anchor verse for the months, the Bible says God is the breaker. He breaks barriers. Glory to God. All right, very quickly, like I said, I think I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm missing. Oh, glory to God. I will just end it. Keys to breaking barriers. Short sermon. I'm sure. How many minutes have I done? 30? Who is counting? Please count. Depend on God, number one. I want to go very fast. Depend on God, number one. Uh... Listen to this. David inquired of God in the verse we read. He said, how should I go? The first time, he inquired. The second time, he inquired. And God gave different strategies for those two occasions. You must learn to depend on God. Not this is how we used to do it. That's how many people fail. Depend on God. Listen to this. Why you may seek advice for those who have spiritual oversight over you. We must understand that in the final analysis, no man can help you. Only God can. Your help is from God. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord. He is the maker of the heavens and the earth. My help comes from God. Can you shout it? My help, my help. comes from God. Comes from God. That just knocked down that your brother you have been thinking about. That your uncle. That knocks him down. He will 
disappoint you. Oh, glory to God. He will disappoint you. <laughs> a friend of mine went to South Africa. He was calling one pastor. Hey, pastor. <laughs> he said, when you come, just call me. When you arrive, Pretoria, just come. Just come. When you are there, Pretoria, just call me. He entered Pretoria. Phone switched up. When the phone came on, the man was celebrating because he had already slept two days at the barber shop. So when the phone came up, the man said, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you would come in this way. Which way am I supposed to come in? On water? Or through the air? The best of man at their best, they are still men. The best of them at their best are men. Was it not a daughter of hers that went to Canada? And the person was supposed to take her here. Decided not to own the phone for one month. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. <laughs> Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. And he will straighten your path. Why not lean on God? That certificate will fail you. It will. Very soon. You will soon discover you need God. Listen, a generation will, this generation, will learn to trust God in their 40s more than ever before. Wait. Wait. When all their methods fail, they will come to Zion and say, show us your God. Because those who think they are wise, <laughs> scripture says, let not the rich glory in his riches. Let not the mighty glory in their might and let not the wealthy glory in their wealth. Say, but let him that glory, glory in this, that they know and understand the Lord. Is somebody following me? Look at him, but say, learn to always depend on God. When they say it takes only God, that's what I like. I don't even want it to take you. You can run away. One young lady by herself came to our house. Say, you know, you have mentored me so greatly. Glory to God. Glory. I will never leave you. Hallelujah. If I have determined that your school fees, the school fees of your children will be paying it. More I will just laugh. Listen to this. One month later, if they gave her a gun, she will shoot me. She will shoot me. Today she doesn't speak to me. I don't even know where she is. What if I had given back to children based on that promise? They would just be going to Lagos State High School or something. Very close to the house. Badore community. You see, that's it. What am I saying? Number two, follow God's instruction and plans for your life. Move out on God's word. Follow God's instruction. There is nothing more difficult than trying to do fervently what cannot be done. If you will break barriers, first establish God's mind and follow it through. This is what God has said concerning me. Follow it through. God does not speak in popular opinions. Are you following what I'm saying? Your friend will not agree with what God says. Whatever God tells you, do it. David received a word from God. He said, when you say when you get to the mulberry tree, he said you will until you hear a sound of movement at the mulberry tree. He said, don't move. That's God's instruction. You some of us are so in a hurry that we outrun God. Calm down. Stop being anxious. It will work it out. It will work it out. Not you. It will. If you build that house yourself, we'll see how it will look like. But if God builds it, there will be a difference. It's one that you, you build one. After two years, you did window. After three years, you did tiling. After four years, you plaster inside. This is with God, does it be better? Psalm 119105. Your word is a what? A light unto my path, a lamp unto my face. He sent for this word, and his word healed and delivered them. 10720. And he sent a word to Jacob, Isaiah 9, verse 8, and it became the light upon which Israel traveled. A light upon Israel, that's what another translation says. <laughs> that word of God. I said it last week. God said, apply for job this month. He didn't say that in the month of May. He said it in the month of June. Some of you came to church after seven days. You have not done one application, and you say you want to do a change of job. One time, right? You see, people do themselves. 
They do themselves. So there's no application. There's no job. What are you saying? <laughs> Follow God's instruction. God will never speak and walk contrary to his instruction. Number three. I want to run here. Make godly sound decisions and choices. Some people's problems are not spiritual. Write that down. Write that down. Some of my problems are not spiritual. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Some of my problems. I want to personalize so that when you read your notes, if, if you read it, you will just, you will see it. Some of my problems are not spiritual. Underline it or circle it or write it in capital letter. One of the basic equipments. Look at that word fundamental. Basic equipping God has given us as gifts to make us break barrier is our head, our brain, and a renewed mind. Use it. Ephesians 4.23 Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. When I see decisions certain believers make, I know that they will soon get into trouble. Some decisions are just, are not the devil. It is you. Look at the guy that you said yes to. The tattoo is from here to here. No, no, no. Look at that. You are the fourth girl in one year. And you believe your case is different? No, Sama. Your case is the same. Because it is not you that is the problem. This man does not have commitment. Can you see what I'm saying? It is not you collected salary, you, are, you didn't pay your tithe, you didn't pay offering, you did not send anything to your mom, you bought clothes, clothes, clothes. At it, God gave you seed, God gave you food, you had the seed, you had the food. Even you almost had the Lord, they said the Lord ran away. <laughs> you would have eaten him. Can you see what I'm talking about? Believers think that, you see, if there is a farmer so seed and then expect an harvest, if by chance the farmer eats the seed and the food, where is the harvest? Some of you don't have promotion because you don't sow any seed. That's why you have been on the same level. Let me tell you all heartedly, all heartedly, man to man. <laughs> you know you say when you say man to man, <laughs> some women need it too. Your problem is not the devil; it is you. There is nothing on the ground. So when you even pray the Lord of the harvest. Cause the seed. You see, when the rain starts falling, some farmers don't jubilate like some farmers jubilate. If you don't have seed on the ground, there's no jubilate for. Some of us it's rain in Lagos because it disturbs us. But if you have a farm in Ekwe, you will not be you will you will be jubilated. Why? Because there's a seed on the ground. Your decisions. You want a good home. See the way you are talking to your wife. Oh, a good home is so far from you. It's so far. Very, very far. Some people need a change of lifestyle. A change of wardrobe. All these guys that are coming to me, why are they always coming to me? It's because that is what you are selling. What you reveal is what will come. Those who want to eat you will come at you. But if you are well packaged, they want to buy you to reveal you. Glory to God. Let's continue, man of God. Listen, the greatest breakthrough some people will have is a change of sense. As a young boy, there was a church we used to go to and they would pray, 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 pray. As a young boy, I knew something was wrong. Won't you walk? How will the blessing of God come? Won't you walk? He that does not walk is supposed to eat. You've been talking about change of job since. Change of job. You are not applying. Some people make it look like they will just take them from that new job, old job and go and place them inside new job. If you ever see that happen, it's because you are watching too much of Nollywood. Or you are hearing testimonies that have been edited. To get a job, you've got to apply. If you are not getting a job, you have to improve your skill set. Some things are not the devil. Are you following what I'm saying? Some people are not married because of their company. If you work with dogs, nobody keeps things. Dogs don't have long-time relationship. Number four, have a mindset of possibilities. 
You think I'm, you think think I'm, you see that dogs don't have relationship. You know, dog eats dog and there they go. Glory to God. Sound wisdom. Number four, have a mindset of possibilities. A man that breaks through and see God works for him must first believe God can. Luke 137, all things are possible to him that believes. Is it possible for you to have your own car? Answer me. Is it possible for you to have a good home? Is it possible to raise godly children? Is it possible to marry Thor? That can answer. I don't care whether there are light people in this church. Is it possible to, <laughs> to marry a lovely lady? Yes, sir. Is it possible to raise godly children in this nation? Yes, sir. Is it possible for you to have your own house at 40? Yes, sir. At 40, they will just say you have your own house. Is it possible? That's what I'm saying. Is it possible? Yes, sir. Is it possible to have your own company? Walk like that. Don't say yes, sir. Walk like that. Walk like that. Things don't just happen. Things are made to happen by those who have possibility mentality. If I believe it can be done, nothing can stop me. You know why people perished in the days of Noah? Noah went around telling them rain was going to fall. Rain had never fall before that time. And he was saying rain was going to fall. In <laughs> Nigeria, you. If it was you too, you would not believe him. They didn't believe him. Rain, wait, what? And he was trying to describe it to them that God was going to, water will come from heaven. Because before that time, water waters from under the house. So what he was telling them was insane. See, your vision might look insane. If you believe it, that's all that counts. I wish we have more serious believers. People who take God by his word. More believers. Be serious with your life. Let me say, I was telling somebody, if that sickness should jump on you, if that diabetes should jump on you, it will jump on your children. Because it jumped on your father. It jumped on your grandfather. If it jumps on you, it will jump on your children. Stop it now. It begins with you stopping Gouda. And it's in Pandaria, 10 p.m. at night with five alive. Oh, land there you got. It will jump on you. Decisions. Release the power of God by prayers. That's number five. You must learn to pray. If you want to break barriers, you must learn to pray. All this suke suke prayer on your altar. Altar in your bedroom. You knock off. And then you wake up again. Fissy, fissy, fissy. And you knock off. And then you, ah, it's been one hour of prayer. You know you didn't do two minutes. You know. Even your eyes is so red. And it's not that you ca- caught fire. It's red because you were sleeping half of the time. You need to get serious with your life. Time is going. The devil wants you to delay your life. There is no joy in buying a, a Land Cruiser Jeep at 75. People pushing you to enter. Why build a duplex at 70? Why build a duplex even at 55? Your children are about to leave the house. It's an empty house. It's better to build a duplex when they are young. So that everybody can have their room. But at that time, it is your wife and the visitors. Because your children will become visitors. Ask yourself, when was the last time some of you went home? If your mom should be the duplex now, don't you think he was wasting money? Don't let the devil delay you like he delayed your parents. Be serious about your life now. Plan your finances now. Pray. Pray. When was the last time you prayed for one hour? Even Yahoo boys don't have it. This is you. Yahoo, Yahoo people think it's easy. Try it. No, try it. Yahoo, Yahoo. Try it. 2 a.m. You are sleeping there away as a, as a walker, as, as warm water. They are very awake. You, you are sleeping. The blood of heaven woke you up. Your heart pressure, your, your, your BP went from 70. It went to 150. You woke up. You knew it was not normal. 
Badura, you are still rolling around. You are still rolling around. And I say, I didn't sleep throughout the night. If you had prayed, you would have woken up refreshed. You would have entered the work refreshed. Battles you would have won. Oh, we want to be a true generation. And they don't understand that the devil has not changed. It's still the same. Jesus looked at Peter and said, the devil has desired to sieve you as wheat. I don't think many of you know how they sieve wheat. If you are, do you know pap? Not custard. If you have known how they sieve that thing, imagine the devil sieving you that way. You see the way? And for them, they stand on the mountain and they will push it up and the wind will be sieving it. That's how the devil will have desired to sieve him. That's New Testament. <laughs> As desired. He said, but I have prayed for you. It is well. And then finally, this is where I want to stop. I think I've jumped on. It's okay. Unleash the power of praise. Listen, dear friends, praise is a weapon. Many believers have shortchanged themselves. Because they are not giving to praise. You must learn and seek to praise God. Praise is key. Praise is key. Let me say this to you. When you pray, angels are released. When you praise, God comes down. I have not found a greater power to releasing, a greater way of releasing power like praise and worship. You remember Paul and Silas? They were locked down in prison. And the Bible says, and they started praising. They sang a hymn. And as they praised, their chains fell. There was an earthquake. And they danced. There is so great power in praise that the devil will rather we make that thing. You know, there's this thing in Christianity now that they have seen praise like something that's also spiritual. If you are not worshipping or chanting, those are the real thing. But those things are things that allows you to get from God, not allow you to install God. David had a barrier. What was the barrier? The presence of God was not in Jerusalem. Because the ark of the Lord represents the presence of God. And he wanted to bring it to that place. The Bible says the first time he did it, somebody died. He abandoned the ark. The second time, you know what he did? The Bible says he began to offer sacrifices. And then he went before the ark dancing. Praise. He danced so crazily that one of his wife, by the name of Mika, said, was he good? The way you were dancing. You king. You, 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 you king. Scripture says, for David, his reward was an inheritance. A family line that was established in God. For Mika, that despised praise, a result was barrenness. If there's any barrenness in your life, praise is the answer. Jehoshaphat praised because there was a mountain. He praised. Joshua praised. David danced. There's something about praise that our generation has not uncovered. If we enter into more, then we'll have to intentionally get into praising God. We have become a murmuring generation. A day is coming, I'm going to preach on grumbling and gratitude. You will discover that half of the time what you call prayer is grumbling. We have become so ungrateful that we do not notice what the Lord has done for us. We call them the little million miracles. The miracle of, li of living. The miracle of walking. The miracle of standing. The miracle of having life. Dead people don't get married. I know you are not married, but dead people don't get married. Oh, your job is not so good, but at least you have a job. Oh, your parents are not fantastic. They are not rich. But at least you have a mother that cares. Some people will wake their mothers from the grave. Oh, you don't have godly friends. You don't, I don't have friends. I don't have anybody that cares. But you have a child that loves you. That when you don't come to joy, they ask you. <laughs> Thank you. You don't have Prada. But at least you have Dada. You can't wear, you, you can't wear Gucci. You can't smell Ronaldo. You know, that's perfume now. You can't smell Ronaldo. But at least you can smell an Ausa perfume. You are alive. 
There is hope for a living dog than a dead lion. Where you are is not where you will always be. But even if you are always there, it is grateful. It is good to be grateful to God. It is good to thank him. It is good to dance unto the Lord. It is good to praise him. Why? Because when we praise him, miracles happen. You see, this barrier, you have prayed so much. Some of you have fasted so much. Why not abandon prayer and fast? Why not switch to praise? Because when you praise, nothing does it. I found in scriptures that people can pray wrong. People pray means James chapter 4 verse 2. Have you found in scriptures that they praise that means? Nothing. Because when you praise God, you are looking out of yourself. You know we are so selfish that we only look into ourselves. But it takes you looking outside of yourself to be able to praise Jehovah. Can you praise him? Let me finish with this true life story. A missionary in China was by the name of Rosa Smith contracted what is called smallpox. She was in dying she was going to die. No vaccine, no cure, no hope. She didn't bear God. She didn't pray. I mean, she's a missionary. She only asked God, what should she do? Listen to this. The Lord said, thank me and praise me for my faithfulness to my word. That's what the Lord told her. Thank me and praise me for my faithfulness to my word. And the Lord showed her a vision. In that vision, she saw a bowl, an empty bowl with praise written on it. The Lord said, when you praise me and this bowl is full, then you will rise from your bed. You know many of us have empty bowls. Empty bowls. No, no, ma. I've, I keep saying it. Set my heart on fire for you. It's not praise. Zoe, Zoe, it's not praise. Are you following what I'm saying? Channel of my spirit. Open up. It's not praise. You can see that our praise list is what we call praise list. It's not praise. So the Lord told that woman, the woman was in the hospital bed. She just said, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Father, we thank you. The doctors came and said, You will die. So there was a time they told her, He said she has become delirious. So they wanted to inject her. She said, No, don't inject me. He said, say, You will we never. They now came and told her that you will never be able to stand from this bed. So when they gave her that, ah, she praised more. She just started disturbing the whole hospital. Started shouting, Praising God. Hallelujah. Jesus is good. He keeps his word. Marata. He just started thanking God. People, doctors came and said, what is God? And then after some hours, she fell asleep. She saw the, no, she saw the vision again. And this time around, the vessel was full. Then she fell asleep. When she woke up, all this car of pus was cleared. She rose up and went home. How? By the power of praise. By the power of praise. Today, that's why my sermon was short. I could have explained in two hours. We want to praise God in this auditorium. If you came with any barrier, we want to have 15, 20 minutes to just dance. Look at the people sitting by your side. Look at them. If your life is a failure, they won't greet you again. The only one you have guarantee is the one I'm pouring on her. Are you following what I'm saying? When I say you should dance, I mean dance. You know, there are things I say that people don't understand. The Lord himself had to tell me, Davisayo, you are lacking in giving me thanks. You look at the things you don't have. And you forget the things you have. And if you look at me, you, if you know me well, you know I'm very comfortable. But I still complain in my heart. Because when the Lord tells you a thing, there's no need to argue. He who searches the heart knows. Look at you complaining that you are staying inside, inside the Guelph. You are staying inside, inside Ogombo. I mean, you are in, on the highland. You say you are staying inside, inside Elijah? You are on the island. Not in my village. 
You are not thanking God. Some of you are complaining. My job. They are playing you in six figures. Six figures. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six figures. Even if it's the beginning of the season, 100,000, they are paying you that. Some people who knew better than you in school had better grades. I've never been employed after seven years being paid more than 50K. The best student in my class is driving a cochlear truck. You sit down here and complain about God. I saw a young boy yesterday, very fine guy. One of his legs was caught. One. I knew that he was not born that way. You have two legs. You came to church, complain. Two legs, they mean fine. Oh, they fine. I'm telling you. The Lord told me. Listen to this. The Lord told me. He said, some of the blessings I have given my people. He said, I am now confused as to whether it is a blessing. He said, and that's why I collect it back sometimes. That car, you said it was not okay. It has become a trap instead of a praise thing. I work by the way. It will take it back. When the sun smitens your head. You know, the rain inside the car is even more than the rain outside. All those complain. After you bench you for six months. You know, I told you about somebody who was sent to the University of Animals. When he came back, he said, ah, the Lord is good. You will now see that though you are working in call center, or better work. You are better than some people. People complain as to everything. The Lord bless you with the house. You complain about the house. There's no light. He blesses you with a relationship. The man has never done anything good. You see, that is why eventually you now took it away. Nobody has come in two years now. You are very humble. <laughs> Nobody. Because we don't learn to praise. We, have, we are not a praise people. We just like complaining. Especially when you open the window and you look at the people next door. Look at that person's life. Perfect. When in the air, doing, using a jeep. Using, oh. We don't praise. We always complain. I'm fine. You see fine is what makes people get married. You are fine. You enter the same car. Some people had accidents. You came out alive. One of these church members had an accident. He said, hey, her leg is broken. I saw her today. I said, her leg is not broken. Oh, she really. If you see people whose legs are broken, they don't come to church. So even in that situation, there's still a praise. There's a praise because it could have been worse. If it was not the Lord who was on our side, we would have become like Sodom. We would have become like Gomorrah. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadenii at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus. Every Friday, I pray in tongues.